having analyzed the demand for inputs, like the demand for water, and concluded that it's usually downward sloping, and we'll just assume that it's downward sloping, and having discussed the supply of water, we can now put demand and supply together to get equilibrium. So I first want to draw your attention to the case of competition, and let's first discuss the whole market. So this diagram, the one on the far right of your screen, is not a surprise. You have a downward sloping demand curve, an upward sloping supply curve, and the competitive equilibrium is where demand equals supply. That determines the competitive equilibrium price, PW star, for competition. And that is then taken as given by each individual single firm in the industry. So the supply curve as seen by each individual firm is horizontal, even though the true supply curve for the whole market is vertical, because the individual firm takes prices as given, and so the price of water, PW star, is taken as given, and so the supply curve is perceived by the competitive firm to be flat. In other words, the competitive firm thinks, I'm one of many demanders of water. There are lots of people like me that are demanding water. My particular demand for water, whether it's large or small, is not going to affect the price of water. I'm helpless to affect the price of water, and therefore the price of water is constant. So the supply curve for water is taken to be fixed, which means a horizontal supply curve for water. Now, we saw before that supply was equal to equal average expense. If the... which is this? Now, if the average expense curve is flat, then you know that average is equal to marginal. Remember when average is rising, marginal is above average. When average is falling, marginal is below average. So when average is neither rising nor falling, then marginal is neither above it nor below it, so marginal is equal to it. So we get this, this equality, supply of water equals average expense, and average expense equals marginal expense. So all these, all these things are equal. The firm has its demand for water, which is the marginal revenue product of water, and what it's going to do is it's going to set, so here's the fundamental equation, it's going to set the marginal revenue product of water equal to the marginal expense for water. This relationship uh, takes the place of marginal revenue equals marginal cost for output markets. So this is the fundamental relationship for input markets that the I'm going to redraw that. That the marginal revenue product for water equals the marginal expense for water. Here's the reason. The marginal revenue product of water is the benefit at the margin of hiring an extra gallon of water. The marginal expense of water is the cost at the margin of hiring an extra gallon of water. So at the optimum, the marginal benefit needs to equal the marginal cost. Now, I put it here for water, but this is true for any input. The marginal revenue product of any input equals the marginal expense of that input. That's the optimizing condition that tells the firm how much of the input to buy. That's where the marginal benefit and the marginal cost are the same. Now, I'm using marginal cost here in, in the loose sense, as a uh, not in terms of the marginal cost of, of uh, that we talked about in the section on... Uh, the costs and output markets. Okay, so so where the firm wants to go is here, where the marginal revenue product, which is the benefit from hiring water, equals the marginal expense, which is the cost of of hiring water. That determines the competitive equilibrium point, and then the amount of water that this firm demand will be given by that. So it'll be the amount of water, W star, that the firm demands. Now I want to move to 
a different market structure. It's called monopsony. Monopsony means one buyer. So we're going to have a market where there's only one buyer for water. Lots of sellers, but only one buyer. And by the way, we're assuming here that water is a non-produced input. In other words, people have water just kind of lying around. If you have to produce water, let's say with a well or with pumps, things get more complicated. But here we're just assuming that water is unproduced. It, you know, people have it lying around, they can just sell it to the firms. So monopsony means one buyer. Now, if you only if you're the only buyer of water in the market, you know what the supply of water is. You know that that supply curve is not horizontal. You don't think this. You know the truth, which is this or this, which is the same thing. You know that the supply of water is upward sloping. In other words, you know that if you want to buy more water, it's going to cost you more money per unit. The price of water is going to have to go up if you want to buy more of it. So in this case, we have an upward sloping supply curve. The supply of water is always equal to average expense, but if average is rising, the marginal is above it, so the marginal expense curve is not the same as the average expense curve. Now, the fundamental equation that's you that the firm uses is the same as the competitive firm. It's this one. That's universal. Firms go where the marginal revenue product of an input equals the marginal expense of that input. So in this left-hand diagram, let's see where that is. The marginal revenue product is here. The marginal expense is here. The firm goes here to point B. I'm going to mark that in a different way. So that's where marginal revenue product equals marginal expense. What that does is to determine this as the amount of water that the firm decides to purchase. Okay, so we said MRP equal to ME, that determines quantity. It doesn't determine price. Once quantity is determined, you separately determine price from the supply curve, which you'll recall is here. So given WM, given that amount of water, then you go up to the supply curve, like this, and that is going to determine price. So this is price. The price is going to be here at F. And this, this solid circle is where the firm is going to go. So let me repeat that. You set m marginal revenue product equal to marginal expense. That gets you to point B. That determines the amount of water, Wm, for the monopsonist. And then to determine the market clearing price, you start from Wm, you go to point D, which is on the supply curve. And the supply curve tells you the market clearing price, which is F. The s similar, now for competition, as we saw from the right hand points, what you'd have instead is a point C would be the equilibrium for competition. So you would have C for competition and D for monopsony. I'm going to stop this video here and then pick it up in the next video and talk about the implications in terms of social surplus of monopsony versus competition.